All right, welcome to this video. We're going to solve Beat Code Problem 101, Symmetric Tree. So what they'll do is give you a binary tree, right, where each node has at most two children. And then you have to find out if that binary tree is symmetrical. Or the way they like to put it is, it's a mirror of itself, right? So this three node should be on the left-hand side, and this three node should be on the right-hand side. Because that's kind of like how a mirror works. It kind of like switches things around. But this is not symmetrical because this three and this three node are both right-hand children of the top of the node above them, if that makes sense. So we're going to solve this problem using recursion because if you choose to solve it without recursion, the code solution is going to be a lot longer and harder to understand. And don't worry if recursion is not your strong suit. It's not mine either. And we're going to use helper method recursion, which makes our recursive code a little bit longer, but a lot easier to understand. And before we start writing code, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps the channel out, and it allows me to make more quality free content. With that being said, let's write our code. So I'm going to have a res variable. I'll set it to true. And I'll say return res. And, and this res variable will determine if our symmetric tree or our binary tree is symmetrical or not. If it's not symmetrical, We'll turn this res variable to false and we return false. But if we keep confirming that it is a symmetrical tree, this will remain true. And then we return true. And for helper method recursion, well, we need a helper function or helper method, you could say. So I'll say function helper, which takes in two nodes, node one and node two. And we're going to check if node one is equal to node two. And then we'll, we'll make this three node, node one, and then this three node here, node two, and check if they're equal to each other. That's the basics behind my code, right? So I'll first start off by saying if not node one and not node two, so if either of these um, is null, right, because sometimes left hand, left hand child or right hand child could be nothing, if both of them are nothing, well, keep res as true, right? So we'll just say return. We're not going to do any more function calls after this. Next up, I'm going to say if not node 1 or not node 2, res is equal to false, right? Because we, we only hit this code here. It means node 1 is a valid node and then node 2 is invalid, they're not equal to each other. Or the opposite, right? Node 2 is a valid node, but node 1 is empty, they're not equal to each other, so we know it's not symmetrical. So we can just say res is equal to false, and then do a return statement, so we don't do any more uh, function calls after this, right? But we have one more condition, which is, or node1.val is not equal to node2.val, because each of these nodes has a value which could be 1, 2, or 3. And they had documentation here before I cleared it out. Let's actually do reset to default. And they say that each node has a dot .val property and dot .left and dot .right. So that's where I'm getting this uh, dot .val property. So if any of these conditions are hit, res equals false, return. Otherwise, let's do our recursive calls. So I'll say helper on node1.val or not node one about node one dot left and then node two dot right because we're doing that mirror thing and then we'll say helper node one dot right and then node two dot left we're just switching it around again as you can see these return statements are really helpful because when we hit these return statements we don't run the code afterwards and we don't do these recursive calls if that makes sense so after I write my helper function, I have to actually call it. And this is where the recursion happens, right? Helper calls more helpers than need be. So I'll say helper, and for my node one and node two, I'll just pass the root node and root node from up here. And then once this helper function runs, it's not a symmetrical tree, it'll turn res to false, but if it never turns res to false, res will, res will remain true. Does that make sense? So I'll do, we'll do a save. I guess that's not really necessary. I'll copy my code, paste it in, submit, and we're good to go. 
So now we have to talk about the time and space complexity. Now before I go there, I just want to say if you like this kind of content, be sure to go to my website kaeducation.com where I have full length courses that cover more complex lead code problems or even data structures which you need to know to well pass your interview. With that being said, let's continue. So the time and space complexity of this problem is, well time complexity is O of n because we traverse the entire input tree once. You could say that our code visits each node in this binary tree just one time. And space complexity is O of n because the number of recursive calls we make is bound by the height of the tree. So we get the space complexity of O of n because of, well, our recursive calls. And that's it for this video and be sure again to like, comment, subscribe because I'll have more future free content on this channel. Talk to you soon.